I'm Dr. Diane Jacobs, and I'm a neuropsychologist at the UC San Diego Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. I'd like to take a few minutes to describe what is involved in a neuropsychological assessment at our center and why it is a very important part of our research. As you know, psychology is the study of human behavior. Neuropsychology is a specialization within the field of psychology that focuses on how the functioning of the brain and the central nervous system affects behavior. Neuro, brain, psychology, behavior, neuropsychology, the study of brain behavior relationships. By systematically observing human behavior, neuropsychologists learn about the functioning of the brain. So how do we do that? Well, we use tests that have been developed to assess specific cognitive abilities. And by that, I mean things like the ability to learn and retain new information or maintain focus and attention, solve problems, or find the right word when you're speaking and so on. When these tests were developed, they were given to lots and lots of people, volunteers of various ages who do not have memory problems. So we have a reference for how people should perform on them. That way, we can compare an individual's performance against this normative reference to determine whether or not there is cognitive impairment that may be clinically significant. This is really important, especially for research on cognition in aging and dementia. We know, for example, that it is normal for the memory abilities of a 75-year-old to not be quite as sharp as those of a 25-year-old. That is a part of normal aging. What we want to do is to compare the performance of a 75-year-old to other 75-year-olds. If there is evidence of significant cognitive impairment on testing relative to these age reference norms, then we look at the pattern of performance on the test measures, the relative strengths and weaknesses across the various cognitive domains. And that can give us important information about the underlying function of the brain and what the potential causes of the cognitive impairment might be. Some of the tests are administered using paper and pencil, but many involve the rater asking a question and the participant providing a response. For example, you may be read a list of words and be asked to remember it, or copy a line drawing, or repeat a string of digits, or identify some common and maybe some not so common objects. The tests vary in difficulty. Some are easy and may even seem a little silly, whereas others may be quite difficult. No one is expected to get the ball right. We just want you to do the best you can so we can get a true and accurate sample of your current cognitive functioning. A full test session may last for several hours, but you can take breaks in between the tests whenever needed. Participants in our Alzheimer's Disease Research Center complete the same neuropsychological assessment every year. Repeating the full assessment annually allows us to evaluate changes in cognitive functioning over time. Assessments are conducted at the Alzheimer's Disease Research Center or in our offices at the UCSD campus. We have dedicated rooms for neuropsychological assessment, and this facilitates our ability to control and standardize the testing environment. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to switch to conducting our annual follow-up neuropsychological assessments with study participants remotely, either over the telephone or using video conferencing software like Zoom. Of course, we needed to do this to keep our study participants, their family members, and our faculty and staff safe under the extraordinary circumstances of the pandemic. Unfortunately, conducting neuropsychological assessments remotely cannot be a substitute for face-to-face -face assessment on an ongoing basis. The problem is that because the tests were not designed to be administered remotely, we are limited in the diagnostic conclusions we can make about performance on measures that are administered in this way. The COVID-19 pandemic has spurred a lot of research to determine just how comparable neuropsychological measures that are administered remotely are to those that are administered face-to-face. -face. 
and we're eagerly awaiting the results of this important research. But for the time being, face-to-face -face neuropsychological assessment really is the gold standard. There are no significant risks to having a neuropsychological assessment. Some people may find the testing tedious or frustrating. Others may experience fatigue or perhaps even some anxiety from testing. But many people, in fact, I'd say even most, truly enjoy the process. I think it's beneficial to always keep in mind that no one is judging you. And as I said before, no one expects you to get everything right. All we ask is that you do your best. And because we want you to be able to do the best you can, it is important that when you come in for your neuropsychological assessment, that you wear your hearing aids if you have them and bring your eyeglasses or reading glasses. I hope this brief overview gave you a sense of what it is like to have a neuropsychological assessment. If you're a current participant in our research programs at the Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, I wanna thank you for your ongoing contributions to our research. If you're considering enrolling in our research and have additional questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. You can call the center at 858-822-4800 or email us at participate at ucsd.edu. Our volunteer participants are vital to our ongoing effort to better understand Alzheimer's disease and related dementias as we work toward finding a cure for these devastating disorders. We cannot do it without you. Thank you.